Now, the kitchen is often the hub of the home, so a lot of stuff gets dumped here. It's not just for cooking and preparing meals, but it can also be a homework station, it can be a home office. And let's face it, it is hard enough to come up with dinner ideas every day for the rest of your life without making that job harder. So it is time to clear out some kitchen clutter. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I know that you want to get the biggest bang for your decluttering book. So that is what we are tackling in this video. It is day seven of the declutter challenge. If you are just tuning in, you can catch up on the rest of it right here and be sure to subscribe so you can catch the rest of them. Now, this may be the first big category where you will, you know, have joint stuff. So you may need input from someone else. And that is tricky if that person is not 100% on board. So at the end of this video, I am going to share my secret tip for getting someone else involved with the minimum amount of friction possible. Worked wonders for me. Now we already tackled kitchen gadgets in a previous video and after that, pots and pans are the thing that are probably going to take up the next biggest amount of real estate in your home. Even just getting rid of one or two is going to free up a lot of space for you and it will also make it easier to get the other ones out. And let's face it, you have a favorite saucepan anyway. Don't try to deny it. We both know you're lying. This one is mine. So for each of your saucepans, your roasting dishes, whatever it may be, ask yourself, do you really use it? Like how often do you use it? Do you find that you always kind of reach over it to get to another saucepan instead? Is it more of a, in case of emergency <laughs> saucepan, you know, the one that you only use when all the other saucepans are dirty? Also, do you already have multiples? Like how many do you really need? I think as long as you have a small-ish saucepan, a medium-sized saucepan, and a large saucepan or pot, you're probably okay unless you have a very large family or unless you cook really large extravagant meals. But if you have multiples of the same type of saucepan, do you really need all of them? Also ask yourself what condition it's in. Is it, you know, old? Is it awkward or inconvenient or annoying to use in some way? Maybe it's even dangerous to use. You know, if you have something that's non-stick and it's starting to scratch or peel, that is something that you should get rid of. So look at its overall condition. Is it still fit for purpose? Is it still doing the job that it's supposed to do? And do you actually, in, I was going to say enjoy using it, but I don't enjoy cooking at all. So I don't enjoy using any of these really. But is it a saucepan or a roasting dish or whatever that you do actually use, that you don't just skip over it to get to another one? And then this is something that not a lot of people consider, but did it come as part of a set or part of a collection? I think most of us at some point in our lives have either bought or been gifted a set of bakeware or pots, pans, things like that. And for some reason, we have this tendency to think that we need to keep them all, you know, they're a set, they need to be kept together. But if you're not using them, there's no point in just letting them take up space in your home when that space could be used for something much more valuable to you. Something that you have to remember is that, particularly for older kitchens, you know, older kitchens were not designed with modern conveniences in mind. Years ago, you had a kettle and a toaster and you were golden. <laughs> These days though, we have coffee machines, we have microwaves, we have bread makers, blenders, mixers, food processors, and they just take up more and more space that maybe our kitchens were not originally designed for. So this can be a really big win because these things are bulky. <laughs> now, if you have some time left over, some energy left over, and you want to continue, let's look at utensils. I'm always asked how you know when you have too many of something. How, how do you know when you have too much. And very often there is no clear cut answer, but I think particularly for utensils, it is when you can't 
open or close the drawer properly. Again, this is one of those categories where just taking a few minutes to tidy it up, clear out some things can make a big difference because these are the tools that you use on a very regular, probably daily basis. Pairing back just a little bit can make the whole process of preparing meals and you know getting food on the table that little bit more convenient. And when it comes to preparing food, I am all about the convenience. Again, when it comes to utensils, we're going to ask ourselves the same question. How often do you genuinely use it? Fantasy you might spiralize all the things, but actual wonderful you might prefer to just make a sandwich. Do you already have multiples of it? This is particularly the case for things like wooden spoons. I feel like wooden spoons are one of those things that we just seem to collect over our lifetime and we end up with six of them. And if you have multiples, do you find that you're always reaching for one particular one? What condition is it in? Again, coming back to wooden spoons, over time they can get warped and splintered and just dry out. And the collection question, did you just get a whole collection of knives but you generally only use like two or three of them? Now, as you are going, ask yourself if the place where that thing is stored is actually the best place for it. Sometimes we move into a new home and we're in such a hurry to just, you know, unpack that we put things in places that may not be the best place for them. You may need to kind of rejig things around a bit. Maybe you won't, that's great. But just as you're going through the process, ask yourself that question. And this is something that I don't often suggest or say. Um, generally, when it comes to categories, I tend to think that you should keep like with like, you should keep similar things together. But in the kitchen, because there are some things that are only used maybe for special occasions, you know, holidays and things, those are things that you can separate from your regular everyday trays and actually put on a higher shelf if you find that it is making it a little bit more inconvenient for you to reach the pots and pans that you actually do use on a daily basis. Okay, getting others on board. This one worked out so well for me. What you do is do your decluttering, set aside the things that you think you want to get rid of, and then snap a picture on your phone and send it to the other person. That will, you know, just tell them these are the things you're thinking of getting rid of. The reason this works is was threefold. <laughs> Fold the first. It removes their emotional attachment to things. I think when we're around things and we're holding them and we're in that situation, we can start to feel emotional about it. We can start to have that separation anxiety. So by just texting them a picture of it, it removes them. You know, they're a little bit more distanced from it. They can be a little bit more objective about the situation. Fold the second then is that it avoids a lot of arguments. When you're sending a text message, you can keep it, you know, very matter of fact, very professional. You know, these are the things I would like to get rid of. Yes or no, what do you think? When you are together in the same room, it can cause friction. I know for a fact, I know for definite, that had my husband been with me while we were decluttering or while I was decluttering, it would have caused a lot of friction and a lot of arguments. And if he had said no to things while he was actually in the room, I would have said, why? You know, for this reason, I want to get rid of it. And then he would have said, well, no, because for this reason, then I would have said, that's a silly reason. <laughs> You know, it just would have went on and on. Whereas with text messages, we could keep it very brief and as I said, very matter of fact. And fold the third then is that it just makes it easy for them to say yes. People, not everyone is in the same place that you are ready to let go of things. And that's perfectly normal and fine. We're all on different journeys. So if you take any sort of negativity out of it for them, any of the sting, if you can reduce the sting of it, they don't have to get their hands dirty. And it's really easy for all of us to say yes to things when someone else is going to be the one doing the hard work. So those are the three reasons why I would definitely recommend that. I've recommended it in previous videos. I don't know why more people are not talking about this. That is what worked wonders for me. Now, if you thought that was good, we are going to be stepping it up a notch in the next video. Be sure to subscribe because we are going to be tackling something that is actually going to save you money, and that is 
food storage. No more saying goodbye to sad, wilted spinach because it has been left forgotten, left to fend for itself in the back of the fridge. I will be sharing some tips on how you can save space. This is particularly good if you have a small pantry or not a lot of cupboard space. And how you can ensure that you never let food go to waste again. Grav mila mahagav. Agus vaki me shivshikalua. Slawan. Oh, dead leg, dead leg.